Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. How are you doing this morning? You are doing fine and you are doing great. Why don't you close your eyes as we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we know you brought us in here for a good thing. And we're praying, oh Lord, the great thing, the good thing, the gracious thing, glorious things you have for us, you accomplish in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that you'll bless us so much. We'll be overflowing with blessing. And the blessings will overflow to the people we'll touch in our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Before you see that, I want a good, good amen. Thank you very much. You can be seated. We started on Wednesday. And then with our minister's conference, our professional forum combined together. I gave you the first message, the man who God chooses and uses. And then number two, we add the privilege of serving God. What a great, great privilege it is. And then the third one, I gave you the message in these principal qualities in Christian leaders. And then for the fourth one, vision and foresight in Christian leadership. Today, number five, I want to consider the message, the pursuit of Christ-like leaders. The pursuit of Christ-like leaders. Unless there should be anybody there that will say, but I'm not a leader. Well, you may not know that you're a leader, but you are a leader. There are many kinds of leaders. Number one, there is a lost leader. And we're looking for him, we cannot find him. It's lost in the crowd. The Lord had actually chosen Saul. And when the Lord chose Saul, he had already told Samuel, that is the one that will lead the people. And then Samuel gathered the children of Israel together. They were now going to pick out the king. And then they were looking for Saul, and they could not find him. He went to hide somewhere. Maybe you are a leader in hiding. The lost leader. And then number two, there's a latent leader. When we say something is latent, it means it is hidden. Like David. There was leadership quality in David. There was leadership authority and power in David. And he was a prospective leader. The Lord was going to choose him to be a leader. But was a latent leader. Nobody knew. And then there is the limited leader. You see, there are leaders who are limited. They are limited in their ministries. They are limited in their understanding. They are limited in their vision. And they say, this far I can go. And no further. They are limited in their understanding of what the Lord has called them to do. Number four, there is a liberated leader. And that is why we are here. That as you are hidden, or maybe as you are lost in the crowd, then today we come and you'll be liberated in Jesus' name. A liberated leader. And then when the Lord has liberated you and the Lord has released you into service and into ministry, what are you to do? How are you to do it? Well, it's captured in this word, Christ-like. Christ-like leaders. The pursuit of Christ-like leaders. As you recognize and realize that the Lord has raised you up, in your family as a father to be a leader in your family as a mother to be a leader in your family as one of the children to be a beacon of light to be a leader in the house fellowship in your church in the cell group in that small little group for you to start there and be a leader or in your zonal work or maybe in your district work the Lord has chosen you there to be a leader. Maybe you are even a leader over the women. And what a great privilege, what a great ministry is that, that God has appointed you a leader of women in the community or a leader of women in the church or a leader of women in the ministry. Or maybe you are a local pastor. You are an evangelist. You are a prophet. You are an apostle. Or you are a teacher of the word of God. 
don't ever say i'm just an ordinary sunday school teacher in my church that's not an ordinary responsibility that's a great leadership responsibility whatever area the lord has chosen you to be maybe you are a professional and then in the profession that you belong to in that area of work that area of profession here is what you are called to do that's leadership and then there is one thing one thing that you need to notice there must be a pursuit there must be a purpose there must be a passion a driving force in your life you must be able to single out and say this one thing that's a man that has pursuit you call him here you say friend can you help us do this he says no why this one thing that's my pursuit that's my purpose that's my passion and then you call him to another scene and then before you talk to him to get to tell him to get involved you say this is great this is wonderful then you say so and so is doing it such and such is doing it such and such is involved then we have come to you to invite you get involved in this and they are surprised when you say no i'm sorry why don't you want to do it i'm sorry i cannot do it is it bad no it's not bad is it not good yes i know it's good why don't you want to get involved this one thing is what i'm called to and i'm pursuing it i'm passionately interested in carrying it out one thing when you are a man of that one passion one purpose one pursuit and you will not be diverted in any other direction and you will not be derailed that is your train will not go off the rail the rail line then you have a pursuit now we need to examine that pursuit and the pursuit must be the pursuit of christ because you are a follower of christ because you are a servant of christ then you have just this one pursuit look at psalm 27 in psalm 27 i'm reading the first part of verse 4 psalm 27 verse 4 one thing have i desired and that will i seek after i'm throwing a challenge to you this morning find out what are you living for what is the one thing in your life that you say if i lose every other thing this one thing have i desired and this one thing will i seek after cut off anything from me i don't mind this one thing this one thing the passionate pursuit the passionate purpose the passionate drive and the passionate direction in which you are following in life this one thing one thing have i desired and this one thing will i seek after have you discovered that thing in your life at all or are you just beating about the bush today you are here today tomorrow you are there then you are in this and that all scattered seed and then you are not achieving any goal in life in luke chapter 10 i'm reading verse 42 luke 10 verse 42 but one thing is needful one thing discover the one thing you are to live for in life discover the one reason you are alive discover the one thing that nobody can take from you and you will not do trade and barter you're not exchange for any other thing but one thing is needful and mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her you see when you decide that one thing and you say this is the one passion of my life this is the one purpose of my life this is the one goal dream of my life and i will not trade with it i will not joke with it i will not exchange it for anything on earth it means you hold on to it and you say come what may whatever may happen sunshine or rain anywhere i find myself this is the one thing in philippians chapter 3 
I'm reading verse 13, the first part of verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. One thing, one thing. Here Paul the Apostle, he was uh, already in the ministry. And as he was in the ministry, uh, see his language. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I count not myself to have accomplished. I count not myself to have finished. I count not myself to have achieved. I count not myself to have apprehended. What do you mean, Paul? He wrote the epistle to the first Corinthians. And somebody said, that's great. What a great revelation. He said, I've not finished. He wrote second Corinthians and somebody said, this is full. I've not finished. He wrote to the Galatians and they said, you've done enough. Luke only wrote two, and Matthew only wrote one, and you have written three. I have not finished. And then he wrote to the Ephesians, and then somebody said, you've gone beyond everybody, said, I have not finished. And then he wrote to the Colossians, they said, Paul, this is great. There is nobody in the Bible that wrote so many as you have written. He said, I have not finished. And then he wrote First Thessalonians and he said, Isn't this great? You are writing to the Jews, you are writing to the Gentiles, you are writing to everybody. I have not finished. I count not myself to have apprehended. He looked at all the distance he had covered and then he said, You have covered more distance than everybody. Then he looked at the place he was still going. There is still much for me to accomplish. Therefore, he says, I have not counted myself to have apprehended, to have accomplished, to have achieved, to have finished. He said, I am still moving on. This one thing I do. That's a man of purpose. And when you look at what you have done, when you look at the distance you have covered, and when you look at all the things the Lord has allowed you to be able to put in place, and the people are praising you. And the people are lifting you up. And then you say, no, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. What's the one thing? What I did yesterday. What's the one thing? What I did last week. What's the one thing? What I did last month. What's the one thing? What I started doing since I became a believer. This one thing I do. That's a man of purpose. And I'm calling on you today that you discover the one thing in your life that you want to be remembered for. And let's now imagine that time is over. And then you have a lot of people that came, they come to your funeral. And then you've gone home to rest and to be rewarded. And the people in the world that are at your funeral, they want to pass comments. And they want to say, that man, I remembered him for this. That woman, I remembered her for this. What do you want the people to remember you for? That's the one thing to do. That's the one thing to do. Any other thing that you're doing, that when on that day of funeral, on that day of burial, you don't want the people to say, I remember that man. And this is what I remember him for. And it will bring shame. It will bring regret on that final day. Don't get involved in that. Whatever you want people to remember you for on that final day. That's the thing to concentrate on now. So that everybody will know that man was a man of one direction. It was a man of one purpose. It was a man of one pursuit. It was a man of one passion. We remember him. This is what he spent his life to do. That's what I called you to this morning. The pursuit of Christ-like leaders. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the priority of Christ's followers. The priority. That's the number one thing in your life. The number one goal in your life, the priority of Christ's followers. Number two, the passion. The passion of Christ's followers. You have a passion. You have energy. You have something 
striving within you. You have something stirring you up. You have something driving you and pushing you on. The passion of Christ's followers. Then number three, the perseverance of Christ's followers. Number one, the priority of Christ's followers. As we look at uh, the scriptures, look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 33. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first. But seek ye first. Uh, here, here are the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, If you are going to be successful, there must be first in your life. First, first. Uh, look up here, brothers and sisters. There are two words that I'm going to work with with you now. One word is important. The other word is urgent. One word important and the other word urgent. Now, you will, I hope you'll be able to do this. Because sometimes what I find is it may be difficult for other people. This is what I've been drawing on the board, you know, since I became a primary school teacher. Because I taught in primary school many, many years ago. And then I will draw something on the board for my children to copy. Now you will draw a line like this. Then you draw a line below. Then you draw a line by the size. Then you form a square or a rectangle, whatever. And then you will draw a line in the middle. You draw another line in the middle like this. You'll have four holes inside the box. Did you get my point? Okay, that man is such. Do it. So I can. If you can do it, everybody will be able to do it. Praise the Lord. Are, are, are you ready now? Okay. Then on top, there are four, there are four boxes now. On top of that is left hand side, your right, important. On top. By the side, on the left hand side, your right, urgent. Then on the top, second, that's on the top, that's the right hand side, you will write, not important. Then underneath urgent, you will write, not urgent. Important not important by the side urgent not urgent you have done it if you don't know how to do it just uh, look at uh, what your partner is doing there anybody sitting by your side uh, show them this one is not examination <laughs> praise the lord now you'll find there are four boxes there the first box number one you'll find important and urgent important and urgent that's your first box and then the next box, if you trace it like this, you'll have urgent but not important. Urgent but not important. And then the, that's number two. Then you have number three, which is the box below. On the left hand side, you will have important but not urgent. And then the, on the bottom, which is the right hand side below, you're going to have number four there. And it is not important and not urgent. Now, all the activities of our lives are put into those four boxes and so when you wake up in the morning you will find out i want to do this 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 many many things that you want to do and then you ask yourself but i am a man of one purpose i'm a man of one pursuit and what i want to do today must contribute to the progress of my one purpose in life and that will be the priority of my life and then you say, okay, I want to do this. Is it urgent? No. Is it very important to achieve my goal? No. Put it in box four. And then you find another thing. I think I want to do this. And you find out, is it uh, urgent? Yes, very urgent. Is it important? No. You put it in number two in the other box there. Then you want, you say, okay, let me find out about this now. This one that I want to do, is it very important? Mm, it's important. Is it uh, urgent? Not urgent. Then you know where to put it. Then you find something. And you say, this one. If I don't do it, 
I will not reach my goal. This one, if I don't do it, I will not achieve. This one, if I don't do it, I will not be able to get to the place I need to get to. Then you say, is it important? Yes. Is it urgent? Yes. You put it in box one. And then you will not be confused as to what are you to do in life. What are you to do today? Because you have put everything you want to do in those boxes. And then it's very easy now you say, this one is not urgent, it's not important. This one is important but it's not urgent, I can do it tomorrow. This one is uh, urgent but it's not important. Somebody is driving me, somebody is pushing me. Do it now, do it now, do it now. It's urgent but I look at it, it's not important. Therefore I put it in that box and then the things I do, and the things that become number one of my activity are the things that are important and urgent. That's how to live. And if we live like that, you will be an achiever. Yeah. You will be a goal getter. Because you see the dream. And then you see the goal. And say, hey, this is important. And this is urgent. And this is what I'm going to spend my life on. Now Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and then he said all these other things shall be added unto you i've discovered something when you do the important and the urgent all the other things will follow after in fact when you do the important and the urgent there are some other people that will support you and they will do for you other things that are important but not urgent and they will do for you other things that are not important and not urgent and they will do for you other things that are important but not urgent they will they will help you to do the rest because you concentrate your life on the thing that is important on the things that is urgent that's why the lord said seek ye first a person that has priority is a seeker what kind of seeker number one a conscientious seeker a conscientious seeker he said i have a dream and i'm conscientiously looking for the fulfillment of that dream number two a concerned seeker i'm concerned about something my life is not just a so so life my life is not just a lukewarm life my life is not an easy going life i'm concerned for something i'm looking for something i'm seeking for something a concerned seeker number three a compassionate seeker he has compassion on the people that are perishing he has compassion on the people that do not know their way the people that are lost and is seeking for the lost to bring them into the kingdom number four is a committed seeker he says when somebody is committed he will not stop until he gets what he's seeking for when you are committed as a seeker and you're seeking the kingdom of god one you're seeking this kingdom of god in such a way that you want the expansion of the kingdom you will not stop until you get what you are seeking number five is a consistent seeker you know why many people seek and they don't have they sought it yesterday because they have not got it they get discouraged it's like, for example, you, you see in an evangelist ministry, and then the Lord is telling your heart, while well, you're staying there on the field, you can do that. You can do that. You see an evangelist preaching the gospel, and the Lord is saying, you can do that. And then you see him making an altar call, and the people are responding to the altar call, and there's something telling you, you can do that. And then he says, now we're going to pray for the sea. And he begins to pray for the sea, and people are getting healed. And the Spirit of God is telling you, it's not the man that is not the only one that can do it. You can do that too. And because the Lord is saying, you can do that to you, and then you say, yes, I will see. Because whatever grace and whatever gift and whatever ability the Lord has given to brother A, he will give to brother B. Amen. I said he'll give to brother B. Amen. And when you understand that what the Lord has done through another person, he will do with you. Then you say, I'm going to see. The problem is this. As you pray, as you fast, as you read the word of God, as you meditate on the promise of God, then after one week, you give up. You don't seek it again. But 
the people that achieve and the people that receive they are the consistent seekers and from this day you are going to be consistent yeah. i said you are going to be consistent yeah. and when you're number one a conscientious seeker number two is a a concerned seeker number three a compassionate seeker number four a committed seeker number five a consistent seeker number six a confident seeker you are confident in the lord because your confidence is based on the word of god your confidence is based on the promise of the lord that can never fail and the lord said seek and you shall find ask it shall be given unto you knock and it will be open unto you when you understand that there is no reason to be shaky to be wavering in your seeking the lord a confident seeker and you stay in there until the lord gives you what you are seeking for you will get it in jesus name and then number seven you will be a consecrated seeker lord i'm seeking for this and when i get it i'm not going to use it for myself in a selfish way i'm going to devote consecrate i'm going to surrender everything to the progress and to the expansion of the kingdom of god seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you they'll be added in jesus name it tells us about what to seek and when we're seeking that thing we're seeking for it because that's the way the lord wants it i'm looking at luke chapter 19. in luke chapter 19 i'm looking at verse 10. luke chapter 19 verse 10 for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost have you looked at the life of the lord jesus christ and have you seen how he consecrated, how he committed himself, how he devoted himself to that one thing he came to do? And it will not be sidetracked. And I remind you of an event in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had multiplied the bread and the fish for the people to eat. And the people said, this is great and marvelous. What if we make this Jesus a king? And then he's ruling over us. Then he will make the economy of our nation better. And so they were looking for him to make him a king. A king to be multiplying food for the people. And then Jesus went away. Jesus literally ran away. Jesus withdrew himself from them. Why? Because he had a ministry, because he had a mission, and because the one single purpose of his life, he was come to seek and to save that which was lost. And because this one coming to make him a king will not fit into the purpose and the plan of his calling. That's the reason that he ran away, withdrew himself. When you understand what you have come for when you understand why god has raised you up you know this is the one thing for you to do the one thing to commit your life to that's why jesus christ said he stated the purpose for which he came and the purpose for which he came was very very clear for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost you'll concentrate on your ministry Amen. you'll concentrate on what the lord has given you to do in jesus name Amen. how do i explain the thing you are to concentrate on is attached is associated with the kingdom number one enter into the kingdom because how can you bring other people into the kingdom if you have not entered into the kingdom yourself enter into the kingdom number two it's thrown the king the king is christ the king is jesus and you open your heart to the king and he opens the kingdom to you you've entered in but now you want to enthrone him in your heart you make you want to make him the all in all the number one in your life 
the very center in your will that now I have enthroned the king. The king is present in me. The king is prominent in me. And the king is preeminent in my life. You have enthroned him. Number three, exalt the king. Exalt the king. And that's what John the Baptist was doing when he said in John chapter 3 verse 30, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. You will exalt the king, number four, and deal for the kingdom's sake. And deal for the kingdom's sake. And there was uh, one man, he was having lunch with a boxer. And this uh, boxer had retired by that time. But he sustained a lot of bruises on the face. And when this other fellow, eating, dining, having lunch with the ex-boxer, when he stayed up close, he looked at his face and he saw a lot of bruises. And then he became inquisitive and said, I'm going to ask you a question. Looks like when you were boxing and you were still in the ring, that you sustained a lot of bruises, a lot of punches. And uh, how could you endure all these bruises? Because it appears you had it before, then you went to the ring, you had some bruises, you went to the ring again, you had some bruises. How could you endure that all your life? And then the man replied, he said, when I see the medal I am looking for, I don't care for the bruises I receive. When I see their watch, when I see the reward, when I see the medal that I'm looking for, I don't care for the bruises. The bruises don't mean anything. The thing that means much is the award and the reward and the medal I'm looking for. When you have a goal, when you have a purpose, when you have a dream, when you have something that must be accomplished, you don't care for the persecution, for the trial, for the problems, for the pebbles, and for the rough road that you take to get you there. You see the people that run away, when the heat is on, they are the people that are not looking at the medal. They are not looking at the reward. And they are not looking at the dream. They are not looking at the goal. When I see the medal, when I see the award, when I see the reward, I'm looking for, I don't care for the bruises. Therefore, it means that you will endure for the kingdom's sake. Number five, establish the kingdom principles in your heart. Establish the kingdom principles. Number six, expand, extend, enlarge the kingdom. The programs you put in place in your church, let it be a program to expand, to extend, and to enlarge the kingdom. The activities you get involved in, in your personal life, let it be programs or projects that will extend the kingdom, expand the kingdom, enlarge the kingdom. Number seven, expect the kingdom. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there ye will be also. Expect the kingdom, the coming of the king, by the grace of God, will be there in Jesus' name. The priority of seeking, seeking, seeking the kingdom, the priority of Christ's followers. And as we have that priority, then we know that that kingdom will be ours in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 25. Acts 11, verse 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, 
for to seek Saul. Saul had been born again. He later became Paul the Apostle. And then it's like everybody abandoned him. But Barnabas went and he sought for Saul. So as to bring him into the warm fellowship of the people of God so that he can grow. We're having this crusade and we're concluding the crusade tonight. Many people are coming to know the Lord. And there are Pauls among them, Stephens among them, Philips among them. And there are Peters among them. There are Matthews among them. There are apostles to be among them. Evangelists to be among them. And there are great men of God to come among them. The people that God Almighty will use for his own glory, for the expansion of the kingdom. The people that will be mighty, passionate, soul winners among them. And what we need to do is to do like Barnabas and then we'll reach out to them. A Saul there, a Stephen there, a Matthew there, a Philip there. And then as you see them and you bring them into the warmth of the fellowship of the Lord. And what a great reward and a great result it will be for the church of the living God. As we do not allow those Pauls, those Stephens, those Philips, and those Matthews, and those Peters and Simons, the people the Lord has brought to himself, we do not allow them to be lost in the crowd. And then we bring them into the warm fellowship of the people of God. Look at that, Acts chapter 11 again. Acts 11, verse 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, for to seek Saul. We will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. A good, good amen. amen. I come to point number two. The passion of Christ's followers. The passion of Christ's followers. Now when we say follower, that means something. Look at Judges. I need to illustrate this for you. Judges chapter 7. In Judges chapter 7, we're looking at verse 17. Judges chapter 7, we're looking at verse 17. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. That's what it means to follow. Christ is leading the example for us. And Christ is going in the way for us. I am the way. I am the truth, I am the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And as Christ is, for, as Christ is going in the front, and then he says, you are now my followers. And the implication of being a follower of Jesus is that you will look at him. And whatever he does, that's what you will do likewise. It shall be that as I do so shall ye do followers of Christ and then we come to John chapter 13 John chapter 13 in John chapter 13 here is what to be the action and the attitude as well as the activity of a follower of Christ John chapter 13, verse 15. Why? I've given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Followers of Christ, you look at the life of Christ, the passion of Christ, the pursuit of Christ, the purpose of Christ, the pattern of life of Christ. And then that pursuit, that passion, that purpose, that pattern of life that you find in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's exactly what you do. And Jesus said, I've given you an example. I've given you a model. I've given you a pattern that ye should do as I have done. Verily, verily, certainly, assuredly, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. 
if you know these things, happy are ye, blessed are ye, if you do them. Well, do them in Jesus' name. Amen. First John chapter 2. In First John chapter 2, we're looking at verse 6. He that says he abides in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. If we say we abide in Christ, it says this must be the singular thing, the recognizable trait of your life, that he that says he abides in me, he must follow after my footsteps. Look at that verse 6 again. He that says he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as Christ walked. First Peter chapter 2. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, leaving us a pattern, and leaving us a model, the things you do, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. That's what we're called to. We're called to follow Christ. And when we follow Christ, how do we follow? You know, when you are following someone, you are referred to as a follower. And then the one that is going in front, that's the leader. And Christ is our captain, the captain of our salvation. Christ is our leader and is a perfect example before us. And we, the servants of the Lord, and we, the children of God, we are followers of Christ. And what kind of followers should we be? Number one, a passionate follower. A passionate follower. You know, if you are following Christ and you're acting as if somebody is dragging you, somebody is forcing you, that this is not really your mind, but somebody is forcing you, see, you must follow, you must follow. And say, okay, if I must follow, if there's no other thing to do, if that is, if that is what your people are forcing me to, okay, I will follow. And you look at his special appearance, and you look at the way he's dragging his feet, then you know this one is not a true follower, but a passionate follower, enthusiastic follower, energetic follower, interested follower, and is warm and is following. And even if you wanted to drive him back, he said, No, I've decided to follow. No turning back, no turning back. And that is the kind of follower you are going to be in Jesus' name. Yeah. Have you sung that chorus before? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though friends forsake me, yet I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Christ is preparing another kingdom. Will you be there? I will be there. No turning back. No turning back. You want to live like he lived. You want to say what he said. You want to do what he did. You want to preach the way he preached. And you want to seek for the lost the way he sought for the lost. A passionate follower. Number two, a purposeful follower. You have a purpose. You are following him now. So that you can follow him into the kingdom. A purposeful follower. Number three, a painstaking follower. Painstaking follower. That means you're very meticulous about it. You're looking at the lifestyle of Christ. You're looking at the details of the life of Christ. And you are a painstaking follower. Number four, a prayerful follower. Lord, I am not sufficient. Lord, I'm not strong enough. Lord, I need your grace. Lord, I need your power. Lord, I need your strength. It's a prayerful follower. Number five is a prevailing follower. A prevailing follower. You cannot turn him back. And you cannot stop him. And you cannot shut his mouth. Because he is a prevailing follower. Number six, he is a patient follower. Patient follower. And you know, when you are following the Lord, there are some things you need. You have been received following the Lord. And maybe the first day, you have not received what you are looking for. Maybe the second week, you have not totally received everything you are looking for. But you are patient. 
and you're following the Lord and you say Lord I'm going to follow you to the end and it doesn't matter whether I've got everything I'm looking for but I know I'm going to get it eventually number seven a productive follower uh, you're following the Lord will bring results I said you're following the Lord will bring results and we will see the result of following the Lord in your life in Jesus name a productive follower. Now when we say Jesus Christ, the captain is the leader and we're following him. You know the implication in our lives? Luke chapter 19 verse 10. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And then you are following Christ. Remember, he's a perfect example. Remember, he is our model. Remember, he is our pattern. And you are following him. What did he come to do here on, on earth? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And because that's what he did, that's what he spent his life on. And you are following purposefully, passionately, and painstakingly, and prayerfully, prevailingly, and you are following him patiently and productively, then you do exactly as he did. You commit your life to seeking the people that are lost. Luke chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 4. In Luke chapter 15, looking at verse 4, what man of you, having an hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it. Which one of you, having an hundred sheep, and one is lost, will he not leave the ninety and nine in the safety of the fold and then go after that one that is still to be found? And he goes on seeking painstakingly. And he goes on seeking patiently. And he goes on seeking prayerfully. And he goes on seeking uh, in all his strength, very, very vigilant, perseveringly, until he finds that which was lost. You see, if you are passionately following the Lord, that's exactly what you do. That the same the Lord has given you to do. The purpose the Lord has given you to live for. You patiently, passionately, purposefully, painstakingly, and perseveringly, prayerfully. You reach after that sin until you get it. Verse 5. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. More than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance, either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if he lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it. And when she has found it, she calleth her friends. And our neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. You see what the Lord is telling us? He came to seek. And the Lord is also saying, Which you must follow after his example. We'll do it in Jesus' name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. We're looking at verse 33. First Corinthians 10, verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but seeking the profit of many, that they may be saved. The reason why you do what you do. The reason you go the lengths you go is not to seek your own pleasure. If you are seeking your own pleasure every time, the thing that pleases you, you're not going to go too far in life. But when well, you can take in some pain, you can take in some inconveniences, 
because you are seeking for the salvation of the people that are lost. That's what Jesus did. He went to the cross and died. So that many in their multitudes of that time, of, of this time, until the world will come to an end, so that many will get saved, seeking not his own profit, not his own pleasure, but going through pain, so that many can be saved. I pray the Lord will give us the grace to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three, the perseverance of Christ's followers. The perseverance of Christ's followers. If we're going to actually have the passion we ought to have, and we're going to commit ourselves to the one thing needful, the one thing desirable, the one thing important, essential, and urgent, and we're going to be people of accomplishment because we consecrate and we commit ourselves to the one thing needful. We we'll need perseverance in our our lives perseverance in our lives we're looking at matthew chapter 13 the perseverance of christ's followers matthew chapter 13 we're reading from verse 44 matthew chapter 13 verse 44 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field the which when a man has found he hideth, and for the joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buys that field. When you consider something so important, something so essential, that you're able to give up all other things to be able to acquire this one thing, then you are a man of purpose in life, a man of passion in life. And you see, if we're going to have passion, and there are some things you need to take care of. Number one is desire. Desire. You see, a person that wants to achieve, he must have a dream. He must have a goal. He must have something that he passionately desires. And if I asked you today, if you had a chance to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, and I asked you, watch is your number one desire to be in life, to achieve in life, to get in life, and to accomplish in life. If I say you have 10 seconds, just to tell me, you don't have a lot of time to think through, just tell me what's the one single desire you have, what will you say? Or will you be thinking or you'll be saying, do I have any desire at all? Do I have any dream at all? Do I have any goal at all? Do I have anything I'm living for at all? That's the point. And when you have that burning desire that this is what you want to be in life for the glory of God, this is what you want to accomplish in life for the glory of God, then you're able to give up every other thing to achieve that thing. That's why it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in a field, which when a man has found, he hideth, and for the joy thereof, he goeth and he selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pills. Who, when he had found one pair of great price, went and sold all that he had and he bought it. Is, let me say, for example, if the Lord wants to make you an evangelist, and the Lord is telling you already, this is what I'm calling you for, and you are being with us on the evangelistic field in the evenings, all these three evenings, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and you are going to be there tonight. I said you are going to be there tonight. Yeah. And the Lord has been impressing it on your heart. I brought you here not to be an observer. I brought you here to know that this is what I'm preparing you for in life. Are you willing to give up your convenience? Are you willing to give up the present thing you are doing? Are you willing to give up anything to say, I've discovered the pearl of great price, the kingdom. 
and this is the call of God upon my life and because this is the call of God upon my life the Lord is laying his hand of commission upon me I give up everything so as to be what the Lord wants me to be and you will be Amen. I said you will be Amen. it takes perseverance perseverance I told you number one is desire number two you aspire you put some real energy to it, some plan into it. It's like, I, I desire this. And the desire is just floating in my mind. But now I aspire, I aspire. And then number three, you require. You can ask questions, require. If you have chance to talk to other evangelists, to talk to them. How did you get to the place you got to? If you have a chance to talk to other great ministers of God, you talk to them. How did you get to this? And then as you require, you may need to buy a better Bible. You may need to buy some good books. You may need to listen to some audio cassettes or even video cassettes. Or you may need any other thing in your life. But you require, number four, you acquire. You acquire all the things that are necessary. All the things that will build you up, you acquire them. You might acquire them by just going to the bookshop and buying them. You might acquire them by getting on your knees and praying through and acquire them before the Lord. But the Lord will give it to you. Yeah. I said the Lord will give it to you. Yeah. And then after you have done that, you are telling the Lord, I'm not through yet. I just want everything you have for me. And the Lord will give it to you. Yeah. You are on your knees, some bended knees, you are asking. And you are seeking. And you are knocking. And the word of God says, the door shall be opened unto you in Jesus' name. Yeah. And you follow after the examples of the people we have in the Bible. We have Philip here in the Bible. We have Stephen in the Bible. We have Peter in the Bible. We have Moses in the Bible. We have Joshua, the faithful man in the Bible. We have Daniel in the Bible. We have Paul, the apostle in the Bible. You study those characters. And say, Lord, you called them. And they became the men and the women, Esther and Ruth and others. They became the men and the women that you wanted them to be. I will be by the grace of God, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, by the authority of the name of Jesus, the power of atony. He gave us his name. I will be what the Lord has called me to be in Jesus' name. And nothing will hinder you to be and to become in Jesus' name. I look at Colossians chapter 3, Colossians ch chapter 2 rather, Colossians chapter 2. In Colossians chapter 2, I'm looking at verse 3. In whom I hid all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge. In whom I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That means then as you desire, as you aspire. And then as you require, as you are seeking the face of the Lord, then the Lord is saying, it's available. All wisdom, all knowledge, everything you need to become, the fellow, the man, the minister you ought to be, is in Christ. And that's why you are persevering and perspiring. That is sweating. And doing everything that you ought to do so that you will be in in a place he expects you to be in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. I was surprised I was listening to one man. And a man that is not uh, even, is not uh, an African. And the man was not even preaching from the Bible. But the man was talking about becoming an achiever. You know, people also who are not in the church, they also talk about being an achiever. And he was talking about setting goals, having a dream, having a goal, having something that your life is built for. And then the man said something that surprised me. He said, if your goal in life, is to sit before the television and be watching television of your life. If that's your dream, if that's your desire, if that's your goal, by all means go ahead and you'll achieve that. Then he said, if your goal in life 
is just to be reading newspapers or the, your goal in life is just to go to a football field and be in the in the clapping corner just saying hey hey and clapping it says if that's your goal in life go ahead that's what you'll achieve it was ridiculing the people that spend all their lives, all their time before the television or just reading newspapers and they do not have any goal in life as to this is what I will achieve. You see, if you're going to be an achiever, there will be some things you have been concentrating your life on before, and those things really they're not contributing to your goal. And then Paul the Apostle said, the things that were gained to me, but I see that the new goal I have, and the new dream I have, and the new desire I have, all those other things will not contribute to my goal. I abandon them. I call you this morning to be a man of purpose. Yeah. And to be a woman of purpose. Yeah. A man of passion. And a woman of passion. And to know that from this day on, your life will amount to something. Yeah. And then concentrate on that thing. And there will be some things this morning, the Spirit of God will be impressing upon you. Remove this one. Jettison that one. Take away that one. And abandon this other one. Because those things will not contribute to the goal and to the dream and to the desire of your life. What things were gained to me? Those things I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless. I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I'd already attained, neither were already perfect, complete, and then it says, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, for which I am now apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Today, as I bring the message to a conclusion, I'm asking you once again, what's the one thing that the Lord is calling you to achieve in life? The one thing he has created you for. What's the one reason why you are here on earth today? Why have you not died? Why are you still alive? Why? What is the great thing? And what is the important thing? And what is the peculiar thing that only you can do and no other person can do? And what do you want to be said about you at the end of time? That's this man, he was a man of one direction. He was a man of one dream. He was a man of one desire. And he was a man of discipline. He was a man of determination. And when he stood to that scene, and everybody thought that this was a foolish thing to do. And he just talked to it. And he just talked to it. And now he's an achiever. He's gone home to glory. And then you'll be remembered for something. What will you be remembered for? You'll be remembered for just loafing around, walking around. How are you there? How are you there? How are you there? Flying across the sky and not making a path and not making a way in the sky. Or are you going to be a man that will remember and say, that man, he said so. He committed himself to it. A man of one passion. A man of one purpose. A man of one pursuit. Now he has accomplished it and he has gone home to glory. I want to be remembered for one thing. That that man, this is what he committed his life to do and he did it. I'm passing it on to you. You will do it. Amen. This one thing I do. Rise up and talk to the Lord. This one thing I do. This one thing I do, tell the Lord, 
and say, Lord, I'm going to live. But one thing definite, one thing specific, a follower of Jesus, a conscientious follower, you're not an half hearted, lukewarm follower, a conscientious follower. The Lord has called you. And you want your life to count for something conscientious, concerned, a concerned follower, a compassionate follower, a committed follower, a consistent follower, a confident follower. Follow the Lord. Is your perfect example. Follow him. He is your Messiah and your mentor. Follow him. He is your model. Follow him. This one thing I do. Make sure you are born again. Enter into the kingdom. Make sure that your life has been changed. It transforms you so as to make you an instrument of transformation in the mighty hand of the Lord. And enthrone the king. Enthrone the king. Let Christ be present in your heart. Prominent in your heart. And let Christ be preeminent in your life. And throw the key. Make him the all in all in your life. Exalt the key. Exalt the key. That he may increase. That you may decrease. And your hardship for the kingdom. When you see their word before you. When you see the reward before you, you will not mind a few punches. And you establish kingdom principles in your heart. Live to expand the kingdom. Live to enlarge the kingdom. Live to extend the kingdom expect the coming of the king the lord is coming get ready watch and pray so that when the lord will come they will not find you sleeping spiritually be a passionate follower not a lukewarm follower enthusiastic follower a warm follower and come follow the Lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind break all the cords that tie you to the things of the world say Lord I will follow Lord I will follow with all my heart with all my soul with all my mind Yes, Lord, I will follow. Passionate follower. A purposeful follower. What's your purpose? Why are you following the Lord? Are you so purposeful and determined? And nothing will take that purpose away from you. A painstaking follower. Meticulous. Meticulous. Detailed. And you'll not leave any stone untouched as you follow the Lord. A prayerful follower. Asking the Lord to give you more grace, more strength, more spiritual power and divine energy 
a follow in the Lord, a prevailing follower. You prevail over your weakness. Patient follower. And a productive follower. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? So that you'll be the achiever the Lord has called you to be. The things that were gained to me, those I counted 